sorry for inconvenience so once again i welcome you all in the sixth session of our fbp uh, the today we have expert uh, professor nand kishor uh, from astfold university uh, norway uh, i welcome you sir thank you and uh, uh, uh professor kishor has obtained his uh, phd in 2006 and presently working as a professor in the uh, ostfold university in norway uh, he has more than 15 year of teaching and research supervision experience for master and phd student uh, till date he has supervised 11 phd candidates uh, during year 2012 to 2013 Dr. Kishore has worked as Marie Curie experience researcher uh, at Aalto University, Finland, uh, for 14 months. He has author and co-authors uh, uh, more than the 70 SCI international journal publications, out of which uh, uh, 26 are published in uh, IEEE Transactions journals. In addition, two books published by the IET UK have been edited. uh some of his uh, uh, recognized research projects include uh, those of indo norway in year of 2015 and 2018 and indo russia 2016 uh, he has also served as a guest editor on a special uh, section in itp transaction on industrial informatics presently he serves as a subject uh, editor associate editor for two journals uh, it uh, generation transmission and distribution and it renewable power generation both published uh, by it uk so now i request you sir uh, kindly start your uh, presentation sir uh, thank you dr vijay uh, for my introduction to the uh, participant uh, okay so let me so uh, i hope uh, you can you have the full view of my screen yes sir thank you so before i uh, start with the uh, my talk uh, in fact uh, your fdp is, is on energy management and planning in smart cities for sustainable uh, development it's a very good topic uh, and much talked about topic uh, in fact because we have uh, we can uh, we can see uh, several uh, publications and then several uh, research projects being uh, sponsored uh, by the government uh, agencies as well as the companies uh, towards uh, smart cities development uh, and then and so on so looking into the title what we had uh, in fdp uh, i was a little bit in dilemma what uh, should be my talk actually and then uh, uh, in fact uh, i looked at uh, some of the previous work uh, which uh, although i don't have full contribution in this uh, so it was actually as a part of uh, the i will show you in the later slide it was a part of the one of the book uh, uh, which uh, we uh, myself and uh, dr jesus from spain uh, uh, i mean uh, jesus fara arvine uh, from spain so we worked together and uh, edited the book actually so Uh, i must say that uh, in fact i must acknowledge uh, the all the authors uh, for the chapter uh, which is on title uh, uh, using electric vehicle as uh, distributed energy stories for local energy management so all these researchers uh, they have contributed uh, to this uh, chapter and in fact i am just presenting their work basically and uh, I'm, i am i in fact i discussed with jess uh, so he has uh, uh, agreed to my presentation or in fact he has shared some of his uh, figures and the results as well uh, 
so he said that okay it does not matter for him and uh, thus i must say that this part of the work which uh, these researchers have uh, worked uh, you will come across uh, the discussion the the work which i am going to present uh, it was actually as a part of uh, one european union project actually and uh, it's a real uh, system project uh, which they have worked out how the electric vehicles uh, could be used uh, the batteries in the electric vehicle could be used uh, as a uh, means of electric power storage and thereby how effectively we can uh, use the stored energy in the battery for their uh, building requirement so that's what it refers to uh, their uh, in a local energy management so this is the part of the discussion uh, what we are going to have in the next uh, one hour so uh, as an introduction part on this slide uh, in fact uh, they have considered an official building in the in their university and uh, that building uh, i will show you in the next slide that uh, they have the uh, pv uh, installed on the walls so of their building and uh, in fact uh, they have the power generation from the pv which uh, is aligned which is aligned during the working hour so because uh, when they during the working hour they draw power from the grid from the main grid so thus the uh, electrical power which is available in the installed uh, pv system uh, uh that is again somehow so you can say because it is only the, during the daytime so it is aligned with the working hour and uh, but uh, looking to that aspect uh, there could be a situation saying uh, that uh, pv generation is greater than building energy so that means whatever the energy requirement energy demand in the building you have uh, so one case could be saying that uh, the total demand in your building it is less than the generation which is available uh, so in that sense it is a surplus uh, power generation you have surplus energy generation and then it can be stored in the battery so you have a battery backup and uh, you store the surplus energy and then uh, you can feed it back to the grid so that is uh, when you have the surplus energy <laughs> Right, so, but uh, if you have a situation where the generation is less, so you have to, you don't have much generation uh, as comparable to the demand. Still, so that means they've worked out uh, this situation. Uh, when PV generation is less with the demand, with the demand, with their local demand, still they worked out how you can save some amount of finance well, economic how that means they worked on the economics uh, in terms of saving the uh, money uh, because they have to buy uh, power from uh, the grid to feed the demand here yeah, in the building but even for this situation uh, when the generation pv generation is less uh, still they worked out uh, how we can save uh, some money out of it so they say that uh, uh, you store the energy in the battery when the prices when the electricity price is low but again to uh, uh, maybe uh, later i will clarify they have actually dynamic electricity price uh, throughout the 24 hour and uh, it is for one way uh, is saying that uh, when the electricity price is less that means to be when you pay uh, less amount for buying electrical power from the main grid then you store your uh, well, then you store the power in the or energy in the battery that is one way we can do that and then uh, uh, when you have uh, a higher price when you have higher price from the grid at that time uh, you you meet your demand in the building uh, from the stored uh, energy from the backup battery that is uh, one way of saying if you want to save the money and again in this case uh, they want to optimize the total el electricity cost which is to, uh, which is paid to the utility grid 
uh, by the building manager, of course. Now, in fact, uh, in this overall discussion, uh, they worked on for this situation. How well uh, we have generation, PV generation is less, and then uh, in some way storing the energy in the battery. So, but uh, this situation, uh, storage of energy in the battery, uh, it is uh, mainly in uh, terms of uh, using the batteries of electric vehicles. So we will work out, we don't have any separate, we don't have any separate uh, uh, backup uh, of battery. We don't have, we have not created any battery backup uh, for, uh, for these objectives. Uh, instead, whatever the electric vehicles which are available, so we get them charged. So that is the, the uh, provision that we uh, thought to apply uh, to store the energy uh, uh, when the electricity price is less uh, and thereby uh, optimize the total cost uh, that we pay to the, uh, pay to the grid uh, for buying power from them. I hope I'm clear, right? I can continue. Uh, am I connected, right? Vijay, can you confirm? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are connected, sir. Yeah, just to uh, confirm. Thank you. So what we are going to discuss here, uh, that uh, we will have uh, the uh, battery. Uh, capacity, the total battery capacity, we will consider to be variable because it will be from the electric vehicles basically. So it will be variable, and thus uh, you know that the battery capacity, uh, if you consider from electric vehicle, but again the it will depend upon the how far, how far or how this, uh, how much distance the electric vehicle has moved. Let's say the owner of the electric vehicle has uh, moved from his residence to the university so what was the distance basically and then what is the state of charge available in the battery so that is important here so as just uh, the battery capacity here uh, which is dependent on the uh, distance uh, to which the electric vehicles has traveled uh, it is variable quantity here uh, there will be an optimization model uh, to minimize the uh, electricity price that we uh, for the electricity that we import from the grid here. Uh, this uh, optimization model uh, will have the use uh, uh, what will be the number of electric vehicles parks uh, in the parking lot that is parking space. So how many electric vehicles are available? Uh, throughout the day time because it varies right so because the employees of the university uh, they come at different hour and then then again they will leave so so it will depend upon how many number of electric vehicles uh, they are actually uh, available in the parking space because that will decide uh, what is the available storage capacity uh, and and as i said it will vary with the time here then uh, again, uh, what is the total demand by the building? So what is the energy drawn uh, or the load demand uh, for the building throughout the day? So that will be taken care of here. And of course, uh, uh, since we have the PV generation, so there will be some uh, self PV generation that is finally. And uh, then the retail price. Uh, yeah. So this algorithm uh, will work out how the uh, batteries uh, will charge or discharge of, uh, of all park vehicles should be managed uh, so as to minimize the cost of uh, electricity price that we pay uh, when we import it from the grid. So our objective is to develop an algorithm to minimize the cost of electricity uh, uh, paid to the utility grid for buying power from them. So, uh, as a 
about the system that we have considered uh, in the project. Uh, it's a uh, uh, building integrated PV generation and uh, what about the electricity consumption uh, that we uh, describe here. So we have uh, Solar Energy Institute uh, that is again a separate department or center you can say uh, in the UPM, you see that Politina D matrix here. And uh, they have a parking area, it's a common parking area of, uh, where you can have uh, 29 number of uh, electric vehicles parked here. So here it with the picture shows uh, they have the designated parking uh, uh, area, right? And thus, uh, they, uh, this is the complete area of where you have the 29 number of vehicles uh, that could be parked. Uh, it is over here in this uh, picture. Yeah, uh, this is the total uh, area of the center, energy center, uh, which is distributed into three floors. And then uh, there are several uh, laboratories, uh, meeting rooms and offices. Uh, so that is the sort of, you can say, uh, the typical uh, load demand uh, uh, by the uh, research center here. Uh, now, this picture shows you that uh, they have uh, something 13.1 uh, kilowatt of PV cell. So this is the complete PV system, uh, which is uh, wall mounted. So this is the wall mounting uh, PV system uh, uh, in their building. And uh, which is at uh, something uh, 26 degree tilt and uh, focus was the south they we they have the uh, monitoring of the uh, power which is generated by the pv so and uh, that every hour uh, they get the sample of uh, how much uh, energy uh, which is generated by the pv here and again uh, they also have the monitoring uh, the about the uh, electricity comes on some uh, in the building here. Yeah. Uh, now this slide uh, tells you about how, what is the variation, uh, hourly variation of the electrical power which is generated from the PV and then uh, also the consumption of uh, electrical power. So, in fact, uh, it is the generation versus consumption here. Yeah. And uh, here they have considered for diff uh, for weekdays. So you can see it for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So these are the five working days uh, they have uh, shown here. And uh, this is the your uh, total consumption uh, in the research center. And this is the electrical power uh, which is generated uh, by the PV here. And uh, this is for the weekdays uh, for the month of March. And similarly, uh, you can see uh, for the month of uh, April and same way for the month of May here. So what you find here that the total uh, load demand, average load demand when you look at, uh, so it is something uh, 32 kilowatt hour and the peak can be as high as uh, something uh, because when you look at 60 kilowatt hour so it is uh, somewhere here when you look at so it is almost uh, about 60 kilowatt hour here however when we look at the pv generation side so it is something just 8.8 uh, .8 kilowatt hour so so as such uh, uh, the uh, if you refer to, to the, the first second a few slides back so we discussed the case where you have more demand but the generation is less so we have less generation more demand and still we want to work out how uh, we can optimize the electricity price uh, uh, that we pay to the grid for buying power from them so we want to work on that 
so so you can see that for uh, for each for the months which has referred here the there is a huge difference uh, between the generation from the pva and uh, as well uh, the demand here you find uh, uh, in the month of april there could be some higher uh, generation here yeah? but uh, during the month of march it is come very low uh, the same way for the month of may you find some generation but uh, typically it remains low uh, throughout the uh, month here yeah. and uh, then uh, they have uh, in fact because based on this data uh, uh, they have it for different months uh, they looked out what about the season uh, seasonal uh, load and the generation and uh, so they worked out what is the average week of the uh, hourly generation here for each season so they have it uh, spring and autumn season so uh, here they have shown uh, the annual generation so uh, this is for the weekdays they have uh, and it, it is in the uh, spring season summer autumn and uh, last one the winter season here and uh, you can find that uh, uh, if you look at uh, spring season and uh, the autumn season here for these two seasons uh, uh, you have comparatively higher uh, generation here because when you look at these plots so they have comparatively higher generation and then again this one uh, the, during the spring season they have comparatively higher generation uh, now what is the reason uh, because uh, during these two months or uh, sorry these two seasons uh, the outside temperature is cooler and thus you have a higher efficiency from the pv system pv panel here but uh, though you can say for the winter season uh, uh, outside temperature is lower but uh, but the generation is not that uh, high and uh, we uh, efficiency can be higher uh, because your temperature outside temperature is uh, lower but uh, but the thing is that because of the location uh, um, uh, 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 the days are shorter here yeah. If the days are shorter and then you don't have much sunlight, so definitely the generation, uh, PV generation, is uh, significantly uh, reduced. So this is what we observe in the month of uh, winter. So if, when you, then, when, during these uh, months, uh, they don't have uh, uh, much uh, sunlight available, and then again, shorter days. So it could be just uh, seven hours or something of sunshine, seven hours of sunshine. And as such, uh, the output power from the PV generation is uh, very low comparatively. Uh, then, uh, since we have to optimize the uh, electricity price that we pay to the grid, so we have to talk about uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, what is the electricity price tariff for uh, that is in Spain uh now in fact uh, when this project was uh, uh conducted at that time uh, uh spain had three different electric tariff uh, and uh, first one was the normal rate uh, i do not know much detail about it but uh, all these three tariffs they are basically somehow uh, related to the dynamic price and the uh, time of use so, so whether it is a uh, peak hour use or a off peak hour use and so on or even the super off peak hour so the first one which we have it here it is the normal rate here. so in that case uh, we have a uh, more or less we have a more or less when you look at because this is for the spring season uh, so we have a more or less a constant or a little bit higher you can say uh, a normal rate here that is the price uh, we have it so it is this one yeah 
So we have a little bit uh, more or less constant uh, tariff being applied. Then another one is the nitrate 2.0 DHA. So this refers to the two period uh, hourly tariff. So it, it refers to mainly the uh, peak hour and the off peak hour. And uh, in this case, we have cheaper electricity price uh, during the night. And then uh, it can be uh, uh, much uh, higher price, uh, mainly during the daytime. So you find, let's say if we talk about for the spring season, so, and uh, DHA, it is this one. So you find this is the variation. So during the daytime, uh, during the daytime, you have, uh, uh, you have uh, comparatively uh, this is the uh, electricity price and then uh, uh, it during the uh, this hour uh, this is uh, you can say 10 this is 10 and then uh, around 11 or so so during this hour uh, they are a little bit more expensive uh then uh, they have the third tariff that is mainly for the uh, looking into the demand from the electric vehicle charging and uh, here it is little bit uh, almost the same but, it's, but there is small change here and uh, this is mainly for the electric vehicle charging and uh, in this case, uh, they have three part. So one is the uh, peak hour. So peak hour will be mainly during the daytime. And then uh, the off peak hour. And then again, the super off peak hour. So it could be something uh, during this period here. So what you observe that uh, here, if I look at for the spring season, so it is this one. So you have comparatively, you have comparatively uh, lower, you have comparatively lower electricity price here during this pay time. So this is what they have it for electric vehicle here. And uh, and again, uh, these hourly prices uh, when you look at for the spring season and then again for the summer season when you look at here because the flat one is normal red, so it is something this one. Right, for the summer season and then uh, for the autumn uh, there is all it is almost the same uh, as I said but there is slight variation uh, in the uh, in these two tariffs uh, what we have so this is the uh, variation uh, which is shown for the uh, seasonal wise here for spring summer autumn and uh, winter case here but to save just in the in fact in the morning uh, i was just looking at uh, what is the tariff for uh, now they have it in spain so in fact uh, uh, from the first june onwards uh, 2021 uh, they have new regulation uh, with a new time discrimination and uh, these regulations uh, they have applied for all the consumers, uh, both in the free market and the regulated market. In fact, uh, I could get this uh, figure from this source and then they have mentioned uh, uh, electricity consumption and the time discrimination. So one is this one. So you can say uh, weekdays from Monday to Friday. So uh, from zero to eight, uh, that is, you can say midnight uh, to eight. Uh, this is basically, they say it as uh, super off peak. Then uh, from eight to 10, it is something uh, off peak here. Then from 10 to two, uh, that is there for peak. And then again, uh, from two to six onwards uh, in the evening. So this is off peak. And same way uh, from 6 uh, p.m. to 10 p.m. Again, they have uh, discriminated as a uh, peak hour. And this is for the weekdays. And then for Saturday and Sunday, they say it is all together off peak, super off peak. They have discriminated here. 
uh, this is for the free market uh, and then again when you look for it for it for contractor power and this will be mainly for the commercial and the industries basically not for the residential ones so here uh, they have from 8 to am to up to midnight that is the peak and then only during the night hours so they have it peak off peak hour. Saturday, Sunday, uh, even for them, it remains off peak hour here. So this is what they have it now as of uh, from 1st of June uh, 2021, yeah. But uh, our results, uh, which uh, we discussed, it is based on the, the previous study for what uh, existed in Spain. So in fact, to work out with the algorithm, uh, so they have to know what is the total uh, battery capacity, that aggregated battery capacity, which is available uh, throughout uh, every hour in a day. So that means they have to know how many vehicles uh, are available in the parking space uh, at the center uh, throughout the day. So they worked out what is the parking occupation here. And uh, for that, they have installed a camera. Uh, and then uh, they worked out. So thus, they can know, uh, because here you can see, uh, uh, these are the numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 11. And then we have 12, 13. So these are the uh, designated uh, place uh, where you the each of the vehicles uh, can be parked. Then again, on this side, you have several of them. So, so thus they have installed a camera uh, here in the parking space, and then uh, they have uh, uh, developed some uh, artificial intelligence technique uh, to work out how many uh, vehicles are parked here. So, and then uh, what are the total number of vehicles? in the parking space, parking lot, and then uh, how many free spots. So these are the free spots, because when you look at uh, this one, so these are the free spots here, this one. And then how many vehicles are parked, so we can know here. So that uh, we are able to implement uh, this uh, algorithm, artificial intelligence based uh, technique uh, for uh, to know how many, uh, parking, uh, free parking space are available in that we can have it in real time. And then they have also defined an additional six day scenario saying that uh, all the vehicles are parked uh, in the uh, parking space. So, in the, so that means they have a uh, static, uh, they have a static battery capacity for the, all the that means uh, all the electric vehicles uh, remain parked on the sixth day so that's it they have uh, this is you can say somehow an assumption uh, saying that all the electric vehicles remain parked in their area so here this is the, the picture uh, shown for the at 10 hour in the on the saturday morning and then uh, when you look at uh, something uh, eight o'clock in the morning uh, on witness day, so on a typical day, this is just an example here. So this is the uh, picture showing uh, how many vehicles are parked. And thus uh, they have designated, so here it shows it's for the day three. So witness day is the day three here. And uh, on this axis, it is the time over. So it starts from zero, and then at uh, this is this is for eight hours. So around eight hour, so they know how many vehicles uh, are parked. So it is this uh, matrix. It is this matrix uh, in the array uh, that refers how many vehicles are parked, and then again on which place. So so it could be one, two, three, four, five, and so on up to twenty nine. So there are twenty nine parking space uh, level so so at, that means at eight o'clock uh, how many number of vehicles are parked and then again what are the location we can know from this uh, matrix here yeah. so that was the uh, logic for uh, implementing how to know what is the uh, uh, 
available uh, electric vehicles in the parking area and thereby the uh, capacity of the battery yeah so they worked out so here they have a different uh, occupancy matrix uh, so they have it for monday day one then uh, day two uh, tuesday uh, wednesday uh, uh, thursday friday and then then the, and as i said the last day sixth day so this is will be the constant one so that means all the all the electric vehicles all the 29 electric vehicles all the 29 electric vehicles they are they remain parked right from the zero hour to 24 hour so that will be the complete uh, matrix so in fact, uh, this dark blue, which you have it here, uh, they, it, this refers to the pre deck. So that means during this hour, during this hour at these locations, at these locations, there was no electric vehicle parked here. Yeah. But uh, it could be, say, something somewhere around 8 o'clock here yeah, till uh, around. Uh, around uh, six uh, in the evening and then again even up to eight uh, in the night uh, these are the positions uh, or the locations of the electric vehicles so which uh, remain parked uh, which remain parked uh, in the site here so this is uh, what is shown for day one and for for all the six days here so this is all Yeah. Now, next one refers to what will be uh, because the previous slide here we talked about how many vehicles are available. Then we have to know what is the uh, capacity uh, uh, of the battery basically. So, because uh, we say that uh, the owners, uh, the employees uh, of the service center, they have the electric vehicles and then. Uh, they reach to the research center from the from their residence uh, and then they are at different location in the Madrid uh, city so we we they for that they have uh, some assumptions because uh, it is not necessary that uh, all the electric vehicles they are of the same type the same model and so on so they have uh, some assumptions here in their study and uh, they say that all the vehicles they are electric and uh, they are of the same model so they have uh, selected nissan leaf to uh, 2016 model which has a capacity of uh, 30 kilowatt hour that is the uh, battery capacity and uh, here they say that all the vehicles they can be charged or discharged to a maximum power of 3.7 kilowatts so that is the uh, charging discharging uh, capacity uh, capability uh, yeah for the battery up to 3.7 and uh, out of this because some model some model they can be of a higher uh, capacity but uh, all the, that means here they have considered a uniform battery capacity uh, in the electric vehicles so they have said it something 3.7 kilowatt only now out of the total car that means for each unit each uh, electric vehicle uh, only 12 percent only 12 percent of the capacity uh, which is the uh, total capacity available that will be used to feed for feed for the demand from the uh, building so we will not use uh, more than that so we will be using just 12 percent of electrical power electrical energy from the battery to meet the uh, building demand not more than that and uh, thus to work out this so they had some uh, online mobility server and uh, which they carried out for the employees uh, who work in the research center so as to know what is their mobility behavior so normally uh, in a daily routine time uh, what is the distance uh, they travel uh, so you can see uh, because this is the center part where the university is uh, located and uh, here it shows the distance here in kilometer 
So there are some employees, you can see, because this distance is something 80 kilometers. So there are some employees which are, even again, we can refer to this one, so which travel 80 kilometer to reach to their uh, center here. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, they have, uh, in fact, uh, considered, you can see uh, uh, around uh, this many employees. So, and then what is their average distance uh, which they travel? So you can see some of them, they travel to a very far away, mainly those who are here. But uh, majority, majority of them, uh, they cover just uh, something uh, 30 kilometer or less than that. So, so because this is what we have, the number of employees, so six number of employees or more. So they cover at least 10 kilometer or 20 kilometer here. So most of the employers, they have the travel distance uh, less than 30 kilometers per day, most of them. And average distance uh, traveled for these employers, that is something 26.95. And maximum, of course, uh, you can see it is uh, around 90 kilometers. So, but the number, but the number it is uh, very few here. So that is the uh, mobility behavior because uh, they they will uh, have the electric vehicle travel for this many distance uh, to reach the destination uh, in the research, I mean there is a center and thus uh, what will be the amount of uh, capacity available uh, in the battery in their uh, electric vehicle so that is also important to know what is the initial what is the initial capacity available uh, in the battery so with that uh, they in fact this information uh, about the use of electric vehicle they have it all implemented actually so this was actually a part of another project uh, uh, through which they know how many uh, vehicles uh, travel uh, all the i mean the electric vehicles uh, travel in the madis city so this all information is available and uh, in fact, uh, uh, the owners of electric vehicles, they themselves uh, update uh, the energy consumption. And thus, uh, it gives the, uh, the website information, gives you the real driving info conditions about the, uh, all the electric vehicles which are uh, in the mandate city. So here they have some information about the real driving conditions so about uh, in terms of the available capacity of electric vehicles so energy consumption is something uh, 16.02 uh, kilowatt per 100 kilometer minimum value is this much and uh, and highest value is something 22.91 so that is the uh, you, um, you can have a picture uh, about what is the uh, energy consumption uh, of the from the battery uh, while they drive their electric vehicles here yeah. now so with that uh, uh, information available so they know how many employees and what is the distance uh, they travel this is one part then again another information they know what is the number of electric vehicles and then energy consumption so with these informations uh, about the energy consumption and the number of vehicles, this is one, and the number of employees and the average distance available. So that could be uh, a uh, judgmental uh, criteria uh, saying that what will be the uh, uh, what will be the uh, consumption uh, uh, of electrical power uh, for the travel distance of the electric vehicle for a given employee. So, and based on that, uh, this is just, if you take it, uh, let's say, uh, this is the something uh, distance of 15.4 kilometer. And then uh, for 15.4 kilometer distance, uh, what is the consumption? So it is this one. So. So with these two information, uh, they can know, they can estimate what will be the consumption during the daily trip. So 15.4 kilometer into 16.3, that is the consumption per 100 kilometers. So 
that is the uh, total energy uh, which is consumed uh, by the electric vehicle uh, when it travels uh, to uh, for a distance of 15.4 uh, kilometer so uh, as i said uh, we have this is the nominal capacity we have said we have assumed that the nominal capacity of the battery in the nissan leaf model this is something 30 kilowatt hour so this is the nominal capacity and then uh, uh, the maximum available capacity uh, we talk about uh, 3.7 uh, kilowatt hour here right so that was uh, if, you, if you remember uh, it was 12 percent of use only so so with that uh, now we will aggregate uh, how many vehicles and then total energy uh, available uh, for the duration for for the working day so this can be taken into account to, uh, by well, what is the mobility constraints for these vehicles because some vehicles will arrive at seven o'clock, some vehicles will arrive at eight o'clock, some at nine, and and some vehicles will arrive at ten o'clock and then leave early in the day. So thus, it is important that uh, these uh, factors to be taken uh, care of in developing the algorithm. Another one is the what is the available capacity of uh, each vehicle uh, for each period. And then finally come out uh, with a total uh, aggregate uh, capacity here. So as uh, for example, so here they have it for, let's say for the duration. So let's starting from eight o'clock uh, up to eight in the evening here. And then uh, uh, the available capacity uh, for the vehicle, let's say for example, 2.51. And this is available. This much, this uh, electric vehicle is available uh, from uh, duration eight to nine, uh, from eight of morning to uh, seven uh, in the evening here. So thus uh, they have it formulated here. So this is the total amount energy which is available from vehicle one. Yeah. Similarly, there could be let's say uh, vehicle two. Uh, and here we have it, uh, the energy, and then uh, it is available uh, for the period from 10 uh, to 10 in the morning to 8 in the evening. So that will be the amount of energy. And thus uh, they have it, uh, let's say, for this one. So. So here, let's for example, for this vehicle, you have something 3.12 amount of energy available, and for this period from 10 o'clock for uh, morning to up to uh, 12, uh, up to 8 o'clock, in fact. So that will be the part here. In fact, so I think, uh, yeah. Then they can uh, formulate the total, uh, in fact, aggregate uh, battery capacity for the, all the number of vehicles uh, which will be available here. Uh, with that, uh, they worked out with the optimization model. And uh, so this is the building uh, where they have the rooftop PV here installed. And then uh, the research center, it buys electricity price, uh, it buys electrical power from the grid, main grid. And uh, here it shows uh, uh, what is the building demand here uh, throughout the time period. So this is the electrical building demand. And as you can see, uh, the generation of electrical power, uh, it is very low. So this is the one, uh, the uh, variation of the electrical powers. Generation here. And then uh, the uh, different uh, uh, capacity of the electric vehicles available. Uh, we get the aggregate capacity. And then uh, we have, let's say, uh, how much energy we can extract from the battery. So, because we have this many vehicles available in the parking area. 
so we will refer it as battery out so at uh, what will be the complete uh, energy uh, we can take out from the battery uh, from parked vehicles here yeah? that will be again of course depend upon what is the discharge efficiency and then this energy which is extracted from the battery of electric vehicle it will be feed it will be meant to feed the demand in the building yeah and then uh, we uh, will have we will have the uh, of course because during the day time when the vehicles are parked so we will also utilize uh, whatever the energy which is available from the solar pv so thus uh, 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 we will have the uh, pv generation and thereby uh, or even uh, if generation is uh, low even in that case uh, when the electricity price is less when the electricity price is less then the, we will have the uh, power drawn from the grid and then and then charge it uh, charge the battery of electric vehicle so but the charging of electric vehicle will be either through the pv system or it will be from the grid uh, mainly when you have electricity price less uh, so that will be the mode of for the uh, charging uh, of the battery in the electric vehicle so we will work out with this uh, optimization model here so in terms of the equation i have just listed the uh, important equations here so as you can see uh, the dynamic uh, variation of the aggregate battery capacity uh, we have defined it this way and uh, uh, it is c t minus one or uh, c initial what is the initial capacity minus uh, what is the discharge here and then what is the uh, charging here and of course we have considered what is the char charging and then the discharging efficiency for the power energy uh, uh, for the charging of the battery and then energy for discharging of the battery here yeah. and then uh, we have referred it what is the energy which we imported from the grid uh, because we have less generation and then we have to meet the demand of the building so it is this one so what is the consumption and then the generation and then your uh, uh, out that refers to the uh, out from the battery and then the charging of the battery here yeah. so and then uh, uh, the model uh, the optimization function so here we talk about the what is the daily energy cost uh, uh, which will be for the importing the electrical power from the main grid and thus uh, we will work out the optimization uh, solution uh, with the uh, low electricity price so uh, uh, throughout the day at the end of the day so we minimize the electricity price uh, and then what is the this is the uh, cost and then what is the energy uh, from the grid that you have it here and it will be this optimization function uh, for the low electricity price uh, for the import power from the grid uh, that will be subjected to uh, these constraints and then uh, we refer it to the uh, capacity of the battery this will be subjected to several constraints yeah? and uh, one is the what is the uh, current uh, capacity of the battery and uh, that has to be uh, less than what we have allowed so this one is the maximum uh, uh, capacity which will be available uh, yeah from the battery then again this part refers to how much uh, energy we will uh, extract in fact this is uh, discharge and then this will be uh, charging so that will be again based on what will be the maximum uh, 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 power uh, then uh, 
uh, uh, what is the duration uh, because this is the uh, this is a function of time so how many uh, time hour uh, the vehicles uh, remain parked in the parking space so it is this one uh, the uh, the maximum power remains uh, as uh, what we have considered for the scene uh, for the nissan leaf uh, model it is 3.7 kilowatt here yeah. so now if in case uh, you have uh, the all the electric vehicles remain parked throughout the day so they have shown uh, uh, here what is the duration and then again the number of vehicles which will remain parked so and if we have conceived we have one sixth day so that was the constant one and then we have assumed that uh, total uh, 29 number of vehicles remain parked so that was the maximum capacity so it is this much energy uh, which will which will be uh, which will remain uh, you can say and it will remain throughout the 24 hour but for other days uh, but for other days d1 to d5 so day one to day five uh, there will be variation so and again it will depend upon what you have it here in this way so maximum hourly uh, which when we refer to the capacity available uh, which is shown here so it is will can be from six uh, seven onwards and up till uh, some of them are uh, even up to eight and then, and again uh, up to nine here yeah, some of them so that's the uh, c max so what you find it here it is different for each hour and again of course uh, each day because when you refer to this one and then again some of the peaks so which you get it over here this one and this one so it again that means uh, the c max so uh, can be different for even for uh, duration wise also for each hour when you look at this is different here it does not remain constant here so thus the c max is different so here they have considered different scenarios uh, to analyze the results and uh, they have uh, for different seasons so one is the spring summer uh, autumn and winter and uh, do not go into this uh, in fact i uh, do not look into this column in fact so just uh, they have it uh, when they have considered electric vehicle tariff, so there is far from the day one up to day six. Then again for summer, D7 to D12, so that is again from uh, Monday, Tuesday up to Saturday. So autumn, same way, and then winter. And they have considered for implementing with the electric vehicle tariff, DS tariff, and then again the constant default tariff and uh, they have different level of uh, uh, occupation that means how many number of vehicles uh, they are occupied uh, in the parking space so for the different occupations uh, uh, for for three different tariffs and then again for each uh, season uh, they have different scenarios here uh, in the analysis and uh, with that uh, if you refer to this one so this is the first scenario day one so day one here this is the one and uh, occupation one yeah. and it is for spring season this is for spring season so here it shows the uh, this is the energy uh, on the y-axis and then uh, uh, this is on the x-axis it is the time over so one to in fact uh, 24 and uh, then again you have uh, electricity price uh, this is the one the electricity price uh, for importing the power from the grid here so it is on this one so it is this plot this is the electricity price you say uh, which is varying throughout the day here it is varying here and and again to note here that uh, at this for some of these uh, hour or for some of this hour the electricity price is negative here right so that is very important to make it clear here 
you have it negative uh, so this is for the spring season and uh, then the state of charge here uh, what is the capacity charging battery capacity charging indicated by green bar plot uh, capacity discharging uh, battery capacity uh, discharging here that means the battery will discharge uh, and then feed power to the demand from the resource center so battery discharging here then the generation of electrical power so you can see here that uh, uh, in fact this is eight hour eight in, in the morning and you this is the variation so it's very small the power which you get it from the generation pv generation it is very small here uh, and where as compared to because this is the consumption and uh, and it is here so the consumption what you find it here in the uh, research center it is this one so as in, in respect to the uh, power consumption from the research center, the generation from the PV, it is very low here. Yeah. And uh, this is the electrical power which is drawn from the grid, so the black one. So you can see it is this one. And then uh, you have the electrical power drawn from the grid here. Yeah. But it is this way. So you can see here that during this period the no power is drawn from the grid i will discuss a little bit later more in detail about this and then this is the one uh, which refers to the maximum capacity available because then that means the number of vehicles parked in the parking space so how many number of electric vehicles are available in the parking space so you can see uh, up to this point it remains zero and then from seven onwards uh, seven in the morning so we find some of the vehicles they uh, are uh, arrived so we have arrival of the electric vehicles uh, in the parking premises uh, and thus the arrival of the employees and then again you find that uh, around three o'clock so some electric vehicles have left here and then uh, during the later uh, in the evening uh, more number of electric vehicles have left but some of them are still here so i will discuss more in detail about this uh, graph so what we find here that the first one vehicles uh, start to arrive here at the research center and this is something in the morning here now uh, So when the vehicles arrive in the morning, so what you find is that the electricity plant, uh, Dr. Vijay? Vijay? Sir, yes, sir, you are connected, okay. sir. Thank you. So, uh, so when you you have the arrival of the electric vehicles, so, and since the price is low, electricity price, uh, you can see it is the blue line here, it remains low. So what will happen, uh, the vehicles, uh, they will start to charge here. So those vehicles which have arrived, so you have the charging of electric vehicles here, uh, when the electricity price, when the electricity price is low. So during this part, uh, all those electric vehicles which arrive, they will charge here. And then uh, here you find several uh, uh, electric vehicles, uh, they, uh, uh, they reach to the office, there is to the research center, and thus you have, you find uh, the number of electric vehicles uh, are now increasing in the parking area here yeah, during this hour here. Yeah. So next, now as the number of electric vehicles uh, are, uh, are parked, the more uh, you have the charging of the battery. So, so as the, uh, number of vehicles reach to the parking space so they get charged because the electricity price still remains low here so they get charged uh, at least up to uh, uh, is it okay dr vijay uh am i going to uh, okay okay so we have the charging of 
Thank you. Yes. We have the charging of uh, vehicles uh, as the vehicles uh, reach to the uh, parking space here during this hour. And then it follows, uh, you, as you can see, that uh, because afterwards, uh, around after trial uh, in the noon, actually, you find that the electricity price shoots up. So you have an increase in the electricity price from the grid, actually. You have this one. So as the electricity price increases, the power drawn from the grid, so the power drawn from the grid in the lab, it reduces here. Yeah. So we have now reduction in the power drawn from the grid here yeah, in the research center. And thus, what you find it here during this period, the, uh, the energy which is stored in the battery of the electric vehicles, they are mint to meet the demand of the building of the research center. So during this period, you have the uh, energy uh, uh, extraction uh, from the battery and then feeding uh, the uh, load demand in the building here. Yeah. And this is mainly when you find it, when the electricity price from the grid is higher here, yeah. right? And then uh, next one, when you look at, uh, so I know, more important to as i said earlier during this time you say there is no energy drawn there is no energy drawn from the grid yeah so during this hour you have zero power drawn from the grid yeah and uh, then uh, and again uh, uh, it is possible that you will have some charging of electric vehicle at this hour also and although it may you have a little bit uh, because let's say the electric uh, electricity price is forecasted, right? It is going to increase. So it is possible that some of the electric vehicles which are available, so they get charged during this hour, right? This is possible. And then that energy uh, can be, because when we have during this hour, so this is the peak hour basically, right? Uh, uh, you have. And then uh, the those uh, energy which are in the battery, uh, they can be again mean to meet the demand because this is the demand here. Yeah. So this is what you have the demand. So there, so that's the energy from the battery. Though some of the vehicles have left, some of the vehicles have left the parking space, but uh, uh, they can uh, uh, they can uh, be uh, uh, used to uh, meet the demand of the electric vehicle. Yeah. Uh, this one. Right. So this is the case, uh, another example, uh, we have it for uh, occupation four and it is on uh, day 34 uh, for the summer month here. Yeah. And uh, again, it is in the same way uh, on this axis, you see it is the energy and then uh, along this axis, it is the time hour here and uh, for this case uh, uh, you can see for the month of summer uh, the electricity price is almost uh, negative for this many hours yeah and uh, and again but it is higher during this period and uh, the power drawn from the grid uh, mainly during this time it reaches peak here but uh, again uh, during this hour it remains low and then it becomes zero yeah. And then again, it has some variation during the later part here. Yeah. So to discuss that again, so again, uh, we have the arrival of the electric vehicles here. And uh, when the electricity price is low, so they have the charging here uh, with this one. And then uh, you find here that uh, in this case, for the month of summer, because uh, uh, because if you refer to the previous case, uh, we have a regular pattern. We have a regular pattern in the number of arrival of the electric vehicles here. We have a regular number that okay, it is this much change, a step change in the uh, 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 battery capacity, and thus the number of arrivals. But uh, when you refer to this case for the month of summer. Uh, you find that uh, 
this is the situation here. So you have a large chance and thus uh, you don't have, uh, at least may, you can say during this period, during this period, uh, we don't have arrival of any vehicles yeah and thus uh, not many employees have arrived because mainly in when you talk about the summer it is a summer holiday for the employees and thus not many uh, officers or the, the people the staff they don't uh, attend the offices and thus uh, during the summer being uh, summer holiday so then you don't have many number of electric vehicles available in the parking space yeah so this 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 is not much staggered uh, with respect to the previous uh, scenario what we had it for the spring uh, season here. Yeah. In that respect, uh, again, uh, for this uh, scenario, when you look at, uh, as we have uh, this many vehicles available, so the electricity price remains low and thus uh, we can have uh, the battery fully charged yeah, during this hour, right? And then, uh, Again, uh, when you look at uh, during this period, when you have the electricity price going high, then we can have uh, to meet the load demand, to meet the load demand of the building, uh, we can have the discharging of the battery here. And thus, when we uh, have the discharging to this stage, then we find that the the power drawn from the grid becomes zero here. And uh, and again, uh, you have some charging because saying that the electricity price is forecasted. So we have uh, though some again uh, some may, some of the vehicles they have uh, moved out from the parking space, but again. Uh, we still there is a provision that we can charge it somewhere here and then again we discharge it here uh, because uh, when you have comparatively when you have comparatively a higher electricity price so, so during this electric higher electricity price uh, discharging uh, of the battery from the available electric vehicles uh, it is now uh, possible and then this is the case uh, we have it for the uh, uh, this is for tuesday and uh, for the autumn season and uh, for this autumn uh, we have a normal tariff we have implemented and uh, in fact you can see the uh, electricity price variation and then the charging as the number of number of vehicles uh, uh, reached available in the parking space and then they move out from the parking space and then the generation which is available from the PV and of course uh, the load uh, in the building it is almost uh, in the same way what we have it for the previous season but uh, the uh, discharging of the battery uh, uh it is still uh, possible and uh, uh, thus the discussion what we had uh, uh for the previous uh, uh months or pre previous seasons it is almost the same way what we have it for uh for autumn season here then uh, they have it for winter month and uh you can see uh, you, you, you have, this is the, you know, if you look forward to the generation from the PV here. So since uh, during the winter month, uh, you have shorter days. So you have a increase in the generation from 11 onwards, yeah, 11 a.m. onwards. So, and then again, you can see around uh, uh, four or maybe five, it becomes almost zero here. Yeah. So thus you have a shorter days so, and thus the generation from the PV remains much lower comparatively. And uh, this is the variation of uh, electricity price. Uh, and uh, then the uh, power which is drawn from the grid. And then you can see during this period, uh, 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 it becomes zero, no power drawn from the grid. When you have slightly higher electricity price, then again, where you have electricity price higher here, you have the discharging from the battery. Then again, of course, over here, when higher electricity price, so you have the discharging from the battery to meet the uh, load demand in the building here. And uh, 
this one shows the charging here for the battery here and this part so again uh, this is for the constant occupation so that means all the vehicles will remain 29 number of vehicles will remain uh, throughout the day and uh, so, and that's why you see the capacity uh, we have considered uh, this C max uh, that remains constant here yeah? and uh, thus as uh, uh, with the previous discussion you find here that the charging of the battery when the price is low then the uh, same way you have the discharging uh, during this period discharging of the battery and uh, when you have a higher when you have a higher comparatively higher electricity price uh, that you observe over here at this part same way the uh, we, uh, uh, results have been analyzed for the entire for the complete scenarios and uh, they are now represented uh, uh, in, now this is shown uh, in the time evolution with respect to time and then what is the energy uh, which is uh, available for the spring season day one day day two day three so in fact it is for the spring season from days one to six here yeah. and uh, this uh, yellow bar shows uh, what is the aggregate battery state of charge and uh, then the red one which you have it here it represents the discharge from the battery and the green one uh, the green part it refers to the charging of the battery so they have it for spring season from day one to day six then for the summer season next uh, day seven to day 12 as per the table which we had it from the previous slide so this is the one so they have it conducted for uh, for all the scenarios for uh, this is for autumn season so you can see that for the autumn season you have more uh, discharging from the battery yeah right <laughs> then uh, but for the summer season uh, it is comparatively uh, less discharging what you find it here then uh, for autumn season again for this range of the day uh, so again you have comparatively more char discharging this is for winter season here yeah. so same way for spring and then uh, for spring and the summer season uh, the discharging has been completely reduced uh, i must say then autumn little bit different and then uh, what you find it here in the so here they have represented uh, for the entire scenario so which they have considered in the study for the entire day day wise so day one day two uh, and then again when you refer to the day six here so it refers to the battery capacity here so what is the state of charge uh on then the battery capacity so here they have referred to referred total aggregated battery capacity and then uh, in fact it varies uh, for each hour yeah and these bar plots so what to refer it here the minimum uh what you find and then again uh, median this is the red line here and then the maximum uh, which is of course this one here so and then for the day six you what you find it yeah the median and the maximum uh, it is uh, because it is a constant uh, available capacity so it is the same here also and then uh, when you have the uh, state of charge for the for these days so you can see that uh, the state of charge uh, it uh, is uh, lower than the battery capacity because this is the battery capacity but the state of charge remains lower then this is the maximum state of charge but the battery capacity is something this one so thus the uh, state of charge uh, remains lower uh, than the battery capacity here it refers to the how many number of vehicles you have and then the aggregate capacity battery capacity here 
So thus this uh, remains lower on this side for each of the days here. Uh, then uh, they worked out what are the economics uh, benefits. So you can see that uh, uh, because some part of the days, uh, I mean the hour, uh, they have the zero electricity drawn from the grid, zero import uh, from the grid. So for so they here they have said it. Uh, in fact, they have uh, economics uh, calculated for when you have the electrical rate, when they have, they have the DH rate, and of course, when you refer to the normal rate, when you have almost constant uh, electricity tariff. So in terms of uh, money saved, so you find it here that for the spring season. So when we implement with this tariff, with the spring season, it is much higher. You have much more saving. But for summer and winter, uh, almost uh, low, but for winter, it is completely higher. Then the same way you have it for with the DS tariff rate. So again, for the uh, spring season, it is uh, you have it uh, much more saving here. And uh, then uh, same way for the normal rate, of course, uh, even for the spring, it is uh, much more saving. But for winter, as you find it here, it is uh, not that much that significant saving you get uh, for the winter months here when you have the normal rate implementation basically so we find that uh, at least we have uh, price uh, the saving uh, at least up to 12.8 percent here so this is the is still significant in fact we have the uh, reduction, although it was something 12.8, uh, that was the maximum one. In fact, that is the maximum scale, you get it. Uh, but uh, this benefit, uh, again, it will depend upon what is the tariff employed here. Uh, you have low benefit uh, because in this case, uh, sorry, uh, it is referred to this one for normal rate with the for winter uh, months. So it is some very low here. So if you have uh, done, but again, uh, if you have this uh, approach to be uh, beneficial, uh, though we are able to show there is a reduction in the electricity cost, uh, I, I mean the electricity price that we pay to the utility grid. But again, uh, we need to have some uh, yeah, yeah, infrastructure uh, investment uh, so as to uh, achieve the optimized uh, energy uh, management in the building here. So that is, uh, 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 we can say, but uh, if we have this scenario, because if you have low benefit, uh, mainly uh, if you talk about this one, so that could be a question. Uh, if we really want to uh, yeah, implement and then uh, investment for the new infrastructure, if you have uh, this much, uh, uh mainly for the uh, winter months uh, because you have low benefit obtained uh, when you have because this will apply this will apply for the normal rate of course but if you have a but if you have electric vehicle rate tariff implemented or a ds rate tariff implemented then of course uh, the saving is significant of course the saving is significant and thus uh, uh, the investment can be made so that's why uh, if we have large variation in the price, in the electricity price throughout the day, and uh, which is normally what we observe uh, when we have DH tariff or the electric vehicle tariff, then you have a significant uh, reduction in the electricity price that we pay for importing the power from the grid. And then uh, uh, that could be a uh, uh, benefit to us. And here it says that if we implement this tariff, so we have 8.45% saving. And if we implement this one, so we have 8.17% uh, uh, saving. So with this two tariff implementation, of course, we have significant. But when we have normal rate, so again, uh, it is very low. And that's the question will arise about the 
do investment for this uh, implementers of the sekla so finally uh, with this slide to show uh, as i said uh, this work was carried out by these researchers here and uh, it was from this chapter and uh, from the book uh, that we have uh, edited uh, with uh, myself uh, in fact i was involved and with jesses and uh, in fact this book is available uh, from the publisher and this is the cover page from the book and uh, of course uh, you are encouraged to buy this book for your library or even for your personal use it is possible so i so with this i am thankful to you to have this uh, discussion presented before you and then if you have any query so i would welcome you uh, dr vijay Dr. Vijay? Dr. Vijay? If you have any query, maybe uh, uh, I, if you have any query uh, participants, then uh, we can have it here. Thank you, sir. Uh, hello, Dr. Vijay. Thank you. Sir, is your voice coming? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, oh, and uh, how about me? You can hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. There is some issue in network here, sir. OK, OK. Uh, uh, yeah, I have completed. And uh, I welcome if there are some queries on the participant Any queries from the participant side? Any queries? Sir, I think, uh, uh, continue, sir. Okay, sir, okay. So, thank you uh, so much, sir, for uh, uh, providing the uh, brief knowledge uh, about the today lectures covering the aspects of the uh, PV power penetration, uh, electric vehicles. Uh, once again, uh, thank you so much, sir, for giving your the valuable time uh, for our FDP. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you, Dr. Vijay. Thank you. Thank you. So, I can log out now, Dr. Vijay? Yeah, sure, sir. Sure. Okay, then. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.